What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Today, we have a recent pickup slash mail day video. I know some people have various names for them. Not really sure what I want to stick with, but that's what this is. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to you guys. Um, thanks to you, we now have 44 subscribers, which means that we're only six subs away from opening up a Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Box, and I am super pumped for that. I have not been able to open Hidden Fates in quite a long time. I believe the last time was on the 25th anniversary, so in February, with a good friend of mine. We cracked a couple packs, and since then, I have not touched the set. So, get those last six subscri subscriptions out of the way, and then we can do that together. But first, let's get into some awesome pickups. So I'm going to start off small and work our way up to the, some of the more cool stuff, okay? So this one is a little bit out there. I purchased two complete art sets of the Mad Party pin collection promos. Why? Because this has a direct connection to Alice in Wonderland, which I think is, like, awesome. I'm a big fan of Alice in Wonderland. Um... Obviously, if you don't know, we have the Mad Hatter, Galarian Mr. Rhyme, the Teapot itself, making an appearance in Bolty Geist. We have the Dormouse, and we have the March Hare himself, hosting the party. So, um, all of these have, like, pretty psychedelic backgrounds. The artwork is really cool. The connection to Alice in Wonderland is neat. So, this is just something that, like, even if these don't turn out to be lucrative... I wanted a set of these for myself, and Mad Party pin collection boxes are few and far between in my area. So, again, that one's a little bit out of left field, but I think that this has a really cool IP connection for my taste, and I'm willing to take a bet on it. Plus, I wanted a set for myself anyway, and it was the cheapest way to get a, an art set for my own collection. Next up, we have three of these. I've been trying to pick up copies of this card um, wherever possible. However, right now it looks like they're selling for like $25. And to me, it's not a $25 card. I don't have a reseller's license or a state tax ID or whatever yet. So I'm actually paying sales tax on everything. So like a $25 copy of this just isn't necessarily worth my time when considering the, uh, the potential profit margin. But anyways, interesting story about these. You'll notice that only one of these is in a card saver and the other two are not. Reason being, one of them, this guy, had, when I took it out of the sleeve, um, it had like this black like booger-esque thing on it is the best way I can describe <laughs> the substance. It was very boogerish. Well, when I got it off, it left this actual damage on the card. I contacted the seller and... They were so gracious enough to refund me for this card, which means that they probably knew that that damage or, or they knew that that substance was there, the mystery substance, but good on them for actually taking care of me, the buyer. So thank you so much. If you're watching this, I doubt you are, but that was awesome. That's what I like to see. Next up, this copy looks really good from a distance, but if we pop it out of the sleeve, if you look right above the W, way up in that silver border, you'll notice like almost like a fingernail indent or something like that. With that being said, this isn't worth grading in my opinion because that will affect the grade. And these things aren't really worth my time unless they're going to grade a 9 or above. I know, I'm so picky, right? But this guy, this actually came from a separate seller. I actually have the lowest paid price on this copy and it turned out to be the best out of the three that I bought in this batch. So, very glad to add these. I think that this artwork is wonderful. Um, alternate arts are super popular right now, and this is, like, one of the coolest alternate arts ever to come out. Two very iconic Pokemon. The Japanese version is super expensive, if you're interested in that, because it's actually, like, a set card, whereas in English it was released as a tin promo. Next up, for my personal um, interest, I was able to hit the Pokemon Center restock of Shining Fates ETBs. So I actually got an ETB for retail price, which is um, doesn't happen often. So I'm pretty happy about that. I was a little bit hoping that the um, special delivery Charizard might come in the package with this, but no luck. Um, who knows if they'll even release that at this point. It might be better for the hobby that they don't. Um, also, why I bought this. So I've opened a lot of Shining Fates up on the channel 
particularly via shorts. I don't know if I'm going to open this one on the channel. What I'm kind of trying to do right now, I foresee myself having to spend for myself a little bit less in the coming months. So I'm trying to sort of create a backstock of sealed product that I can open at my own leisure. So that's something, something I like to do anyways, um, just so I can stay engaged with the hobby and enjoy Pokemon for what it is. Next up, we're getting into a graded card, the only graded card I purchased this month. Um, I'm not really going hard on graded cards right now because a lot of the supply from PSA has not returned yet. And I, I think that there's gonna be some interesting buy opportunities on graded cards when that happens. This is a PSA 9 Shadowless Sandshrew. What a random card to purchase. Well, here's why I did it. I picked up this card after shipping in tax for $21.88. Actually, it might have been $20.88. Now, I do not foresee the cost of grading at PSA going below $20 in the near future or if ever. Um, I think that they have enough brand stability to charge $20 a card and people will pay it. So, that being said, I got this card for essentially the cost of grading. Doesn't get much better than that. Um, I will be looking out for deals in the future where cards could theoretically sell for less than the cost of grading, um, just as like an overreaction to the vast supply. But for now, this will do. It's a good it's a good notch on the belt, if if that makes sense. Um, so the Shadowless Sandshrew is really cool, but that's not really what you came here for. Speaking of Shadowless, the coolest, in my opinion, purchase I made this month was for myself. Very selfish. I picked up a Shadowless Alakazam. Other than the three starters, Alakazam is... Yeah, I'm going to say it. Alakazam is definitely my favorite one of the base set hollows. Again, outside of the starters. Alakazam is just that guy. You know, in, in red and blue and yellow, unless you had a sibling and one of those connection cords, you couldn't get Alakazam. You had to trade at your Kadabra to get an Alakazam and then theoretically trade back. My older sister had yellow version and another Game Boy, but we never had the stinking cables, so I was never actually able to play with Alakazam. As a matter of fact, not until the DS game started coming out and you could wirelessly trade with people. That's the first time I ever got to play with Alakazam. So this card was always, like, this Pokemon was always, like, he had this, like, mystique about him, and I always thought it was really, really cool. Um, also, he just looks awesome on card. So... If you didn't know, I'm actually pursuing like a full base through fossil binder collection. I probably should have done this a long time ago when I first started collection, collecting, but here I am like two years in, finally pursuing this goal that everybody has. For jungle and fossil, I'm just doing standard unlimited. Um, most cards are like lightly played. The reason being, my the only hollow that survived my childhood was a jungle Pidgeot, unlimited of course. And you know, that was like a childhood card, so... That's exactly what you would expect for condition. And I just let all the other hollows match that condition. And I plan to do the same thing for fossil. Um, that being said, I wanted something interesting about this binder. So instead of base unlimited, I chose base shadowless because the contra or the saturation on the hollows is just beautiful. Now that being said, condition can vary, as you can see. But I picked this card up in auction for a reasonable price. I think that there are a couple people pretty annoyed because I had my eye on another Shadowless Alakazam that ended the next day, and I ended up losing that one in like a small bidding war. I mean, I wasn't going to go super hard for it because I already secured one, but I think that this other person was like a little bit annoyed that I won this one over, over him or her. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, we are six subscriptions away, or six subscribers away from opening a Hidden Face Elite Trainer Box, and I hope that something good is in there. I hope you're all doing well. Good luck with your collecting goals, and I hope to see you next time.